Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In a previous video, I took you guys on a walk around of this new to me 24 foot 10K cargo trailer and alluded to some of the things I was going to be doing to it in the future. Well, this is one of those things. One of the primary purposes for this trailer is to take my El Camino to autocross races. And given that that car could die at any moment, I figured the most prudent thing to do would be install the winch first. I decided to go with a Harbor Freight Badlands winch. This is the 9,000 pound version. The first thing I did was transferred marks to the outside of the base casting that I could see when I set it down on the floor. And this is what I created my layout lines from. The next thing I did was laid out a center line in the middle of the trailer and I used the joint in those two floorboards as perpendicular. Then I lay out lines for where I want it to sit, which I then transfer into offsets for where the holes are to mount it. In this shot you can see those offset marks that indicate where the bolts are going to go through the floor. GoPro stop. The next thing I did was made a base for the winch to sit on. This is a piece of 3 16 plate that I've got cleaned up. And it does two things. One, it's a big giant washer. So when you put the winch under load, it prevents the, the base from compressing the plywood and inherently becoming loose. It also gives me a place to weld on mounts that hold the uh, cable guide on the front. I think that thing's got a special name. I don't know what it is, though. So far, you've seen me lay out and measure and mark the hole pattern for the winch twice, once in the trailer and now on this plate. And I got to tell you, in retrospect, if I'd have just made a, like a little cardboard pattern the first time and punched holes, uh, this probably would have been a lot faster and accurate and, and less error prone. Okay, a little gratuitous hole drilling footage and this plate will be ready for the next step. Here I have two pieces of two inch angle iron in a little vise clamped back to back. These are going to be the components that are on the opposite side of the plywood and get welded in later. I'm using my favorite marking fluid. This happens to be a, a blue sharpie stuff works exactly like Dicom if you're familiar with it. So I get these holes laid out, more drilling, and then we're going to mount these pieces here next. Here I am laying under the tongue of the trailer and you can see I have those pieces now bolted up through the plywood and they're actually through the plate and into the winch at this point. I take a couple of measurements and now I'm cutting some more two inch angle iron to fit between those pieces and the frame sections of the tongue. This is where all the strength comes from. The little tool I'm using here is a bevel gauge that I got out of the wood shop. I've set it to match the angle of the beams that make up the tongue so I can cut this and have a good fit. With the pieces cut, I dry fit them back in here. And the reason for the marks was so that I could isolate where I needed to uh, prep the metal on the frame for welding. That's the only reason they were there. I brought the nose of the trailer into the West Bay for welding. It got me out of the wind and the gravel. The music uh, is something that my GoPro added. I'm not quite sure what button I pressed. I like it. In an effort to not set my trailer on fire, I had a spray bottle of water handy and I'd weld a little bit and then cool it off, weld a little more. In the end, no issues. With the mounting points all welded into the trailer, 
The last thing I have to do is make the mounting point for the rolling fair lead. That's those rolling things. I have to look the name up. So what I'm doing here is this is quarter inch flat stock. And I wanted to cold bend it just simply because I was lazy and didn't want to get a torch out. So I'm using a full size grinding disc to cut a relief in here. Now I'm going to stick it in the vise and bend it over and this joint will get welded up later on to make it strong. That's my buddy Eric in the background giving us a cameo. He always makes me laugh when he's around. Alright, a little leverage, a little beating, and we Neanderthal this thing into a right angle. The short leg got trimmed to length later on. I've got the fair lead sitting up on a set of precision parallels here to check my layout marks. And then into the rotary chisel where I grind a hole in. This drill press just sounds gnarly on video. And admittedly it's my newest one and not my best. With that done, I return to my mock-up and get these loosely bolted in, and I make the last piece. So here I'm using a piece of one inch flat stock, and I'm laying out a bracket that will support the top, return back into uh, the winch, and will be bolted in using the bolts that hold that spanner tube in. Here I'm marking for a radius I had to grind in the end of that part. You can see that there's an inset in that casting that it had to sit inside of. And then through the magic of, well, I didn't record the video, I ground it off and now she fits perfect. So next I'm doing some final mock-up of where the fair lead is going to mount relative to that bracket. I'll make a mark and cut it off and weld it in. Wait a minute, what happened to that gratuitous powder coating footage? That's better. Now back to where we were at. Alright, that about wraps it up. 
The only other thing I did was I cut a bunch of cable off the spool. There's way more on there than I needed. Here's a final shot of the way I left it. The batteries are only temporarily mounted in. The rest of it, including the cabinets, that's uh, for another video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one.